Now, the opening scene is of a snowball fight at the young Napoleon school Brienne Le Chateau. The use of a handheld camera and extremely quick cuts gives Napoleon a dynamism that's unique in silent films. It feels more like something modern by Darren Aronofsky than by D.W. Griffith. Griffith is brought to mind, however, when we see Abel Gantz's staged historical reenactments. Maximilian Robespierre is given some dastardly sunglasses, but Gantz stays close to David with the death of Marat. Gantz doesn't waste much time with subtlety. Napoleon's cinematic innovations don't disguise its operatic style and Wagnerian ambition. This gigantic epic film, six hours long originally, was meant to be only the first of six total films about Bonaparte's life. Only the first film was made and the version available to us is a four hour cut. More recent restorations add nearly two hours to the running time, but Francis Ford Coppola claims distribution rights and refuses to allow the film to be shown without his father's score. The last scene of what we do have is perhaps more innovative than the first. Here we get a triptych meant to be shown on three separate screens standing side by side in a the theater. And the effect is powerful. And this sort of feel is usually accomplished through a montage, of superimposition, and crossfades, but with this triptych we can fully feel the grand sweep of history.